Hey Internet, what's up? How are you doing? I'm doing great, thanks for asking. Welcome back to World of Rucraft. You didn't really think this was over, did you? We just finished reviewing all the playable races and starting zones in the game, and from this point on, we will take a closer look at the different areas and the adventures you'll have there. Before we start, let's get some things out of the way. Since these are reviews, I will have to cut out some stuff and won't be talking about every single quest in the game. I will still play them, but I just can't talk about all the quests in one zone. I want to give you an abridged version of it and urge you to try them for yourself. We also have to talk about the concept of zones itself. A little while ago, Blizzard decided to make the zones in the game scale to your level, which means that the enemies in each zone scale in power with your current level. This allows you to spend more time in one zone before getting bored. Even though all zones of Azeroth up to the Burning Crusade and Wrath of the Lich King add-on scale to level 60, you'll still have to reach a certain level to unlock the storylines in some zones. And last but not least, a lot of zones in Azeroth are factional only, which means that you will only be able to acquire quests with either the Alliance or the Horde. Don't worry, I will tell you more about that in separate videos. So let's move on! For the time being, I want to invite you to the Eastern Kingdoms. The Eastern Kingdoms are located to the east of the Great Sea, hence the name. The Eastern Kingdoms are comprised of three subcontinents, Kasmodan, Lordaeron and Azeroth. No, I didn't make a mistake, the continent shares the same name as the planet, and the titan that lives within it, but we're not talking about that yet. A lot of important capitals are situated on the Eastern Kingdom, for example Stormwind, Ironforge and the Undercity. And let's not forget about Silvermoon City, even though it's pretty boring. Sorry Blood Elves. In this video, I want to talk about the zone of Silver Pine Forest. Silver Pine Forest is a horde only zone and you'll be able to start your adventure there once you reach level 10. The Silver Pine Forest is a vast ancient wood comprised of tall silvery pines. I wonder where it got its name from. There are some interesting things to know. For example that part of it belonged to Gilneas before the kingdom isolated itself. It was also one of the first areas Arthas Manitil destroyed on his way to Lordaeron. There he is again! How are you buddy? I missed you! During the Third War, most of Silver Pine's human inhabitants were turned into Scorch forces and the nature and wildlife is still in ruins, with no sign of battlement. After the Third War, the Forsaken partially pushed into the forest out of Tirisfall. They had to fight off Feral Worgen and deal with the Gilnean ex-Archmage Argal, who had made his base in the Shadowfang Keep. After the war in Northrend and the Cataclysm, Sylvanas and her forces managed to drive out the Worgen and kill Argal. They used the forest as their front in the fight against Gilneas and the Worgen and remained there ever since. That should be all you have to know, so let's head there ourselves and check out what we get to do there. We arrive at the Forsaken High Command, where we get to meet the Dark Lady, Sylvanas herself. Nice. Mm, sorry, I, I blacked out for a second there. We are initiated into the ranks of the new Undercity Battalion, or Noob for short, and witness a meeting between Sylvanas and the Horde Warchief Garrosh Hellscream. Sylvanas explains to Garrosh and us that the Forsaken can procreate and have to use the Valkyr to raise the corpses of their enemies to secure the survival of the Forsaken. Wait, they can't procreate? How does Sylvanas know that? Did she... did she try it? Nice. S -s Sorry, I got lost again. Understandably, Garrosh isn't too thrilled about Sylvanas' plan. Ignoring that he just insulted our waifu, uh, I mean leader, we go on to take care of business here in Silver Pine Forest. Even though the Forsaken took over Gilneas, there are still renegade worgen roaming the forest. We figure out that Darius Crowley formed the Gilnean Liberation Front and is uniting the feral packs in the forest to go to war against us. I just have to sidetrack for a second. Check this out. You can try out a new form of blight on a tribe of murlocs. Yeah! Eat that, you little shit! <clears throat> Let's continue. 
we head to the Fenris Island to deal with some human refugees from the neighboring Hillsbrot foothills. Together with the Valkyrie Agatha, we take care of the humans and raise them as Forsaken. Before we can take out the leaders, we witness Crowley offering them his blood to turn them into Worgen and join him. I have to say, I really, really like this quest. Can't tell you why. The Dark Lady is pleased with our progress and rewards us with some alone time. On our romantic horse ride, she gives us some bits of her backstory. I have not always been the Banshee Queen, and my people have not always been the Forsaken. Long ago, this land comprised the northern kingdoms of Lordaeron, ruled by King Terranus Menethil. Terranus had a son named Arthas. Arthas. Even saying his name makes my body quiver in rage. Oh, I totally understand you. Thinking about Arthas makes my body quiver too. Just not in rage, if you know what I mean. We have to take drastic measures to fight back the Gilnean rebels. We travel to Gilneas itself and support Commander Balmond in his effort against the Worgen. I really enjoyed this part. I think it can be interesting for players who have no experience with the Worgen, thanks to the overall chaotic battlefield feel. But for guys like us, who already spent some time here as Worgen, it can be even more interesting. It's nice to revisit the prominent places in Gilneas, like the cathedral we turned into a Worgen in. Back to the plot. Things aren't looking too good for the Forsaken. The Lions is coming to aid the Worgen and the soldiers of the 7th Legion are pushing back our forces. And I have another throwback to our previous time in Gilneas. Remember Lord Godfrey, the guy that kidnapped Gang Greymane and committed suicide? The real purpose of our visit here is to recover his corpse and bring it back to Sylvanas. Our Dark Lady resurrects Godfrey, Ashbury and Walden as Forsaken and is banking on the knowledge of Gilneas to turn the tide of the battle. And the three come up with a brilliant idea. We kidnap Lorna Crowley to use her as a bargaining chip. While the fight for the Silver Pine Forest is going on, we head to a meeting between Crowley and Sylvanas. Godfrey's plan works out and we trade Lorna for Crowley's unconditional surrender. Suddenly, Godfrey pulls a Michael on us and kills the Dark Lady. Wait. Lost is still a thing, right? And you sure thought I would freak out over Godfrey killing one of my favorite characters? No, I'm calm. I'm calm like a cucumber. I am calm. I am calm. We try to avenge Sylvanas, but the traitors manage to escape. But that's not the end of the Banshee Queen. Her loyal Valkyrs sacrifice themselves to bring her back to life. Sylvanas retreats back to Undercity to regain her strength and tasks us with traveling to the Hillsbrot foothills. And that's pretty much all that is to do in the Silver Pine Forest. Well, not quite. If you hunger for revenge and want to make Godfrey and his posse pay for their crimes, you can travel to the Shadowfang Keep. I mentioned that castle before, but I didn't tell you that it's actually a dungeon. For those of you who don't know what a dungeon is, let me explain it to you real quick. Dungeons are separate areas in the game, usually situated in crazy places like a castle, a big cave, etc. Dungeons are filled with elite monsters, more powerful enemies and of course bosses. Usually it's not a good idea to go into a dungeon alone, so you want to join a group of other players to go through it. Unlike the zones they are in, dungeons can be visited by both fractions. But we were talking about Shadowfang Keep. Shadowfang Keep is a castle looming over the Silver Pine Forest. Back in the vanilla days, it was home to Aragorn and his Worgen cult, and currently it's the new hideout of Lord Godfrey and his treacherous scum. As Horde players, you will meet Commander Belmont there. <laughs> his name is Belmont and he fights his way through a castle. Uh, that's a funny reference. But we are not here for shits and giggles. Together with other adventurers, we make our way through the keep and succeed in killing Lord Walden, Ashbury and finally Godfrey. That's what you get for messing with my waifu. Oh, there's one thing I forgot to mention. You may ask yourself what happened to Gilneas after Crowley surrendered. Well, because Sylvanas had to return to Undercity to recuperate, the Alliance managed to take back the city. 
So all we did was basically for nothing. Great. And that's all I can tell you about the Silver Pine Forest. Personally, I really like the storylines in that area. But I'm a huge fan of almost everything that has to do with the Forsaken and Sylvanas. The glooming, haunting atmosphere there is great, and there are little details like the absence of music that make your time there even better. I also have to point out the little details Blizzard puts in the game. For example, during your journey you will stumble upon the corpse of Sean Dempsey, who has been a minor character in the Wogan starting zone. You can also travel to the Dalaran Crater if you want to check out the former location of the Kirin Dor capital. More so, little references like naming the Forsaken commander of the Castlevania Spellman clan shows that the guys at Blizzard are just as big as nerds as we are. There are of course negative things I have to mention, even though negative may be too strong of a word. There's one part of the area where you have to bring down a magical shield. That part just takes forever. At one point I thought the game bugged out on me and I would have to restart the quest. Nope, it just took a hell of a long time and there was no indication of progress. And that's really all I can tell you today. I hope you enjoyed this review and our time in the Silver Pine Forest. Next time we will head to Westfall to deal with the aftermath of Deathwing's attack on Stormwind. If you did enjoy this review, let me know by hitting the like button or leaving a comment. If you feel especially generous, consider sharing this video or subscribing to the channel. This is Ru signing off. Bye bye.